It was the fifth grade in the school cafeteria. My two best friends at the time would always talk about killing cows, mining gems, and creating armor. Who wouldn't want to do that? I didn't understand how they could play together because at this time, I had never played any video game except my Sega. I soon was taught to disconnect the phone line and dial up to that infamous sound that connected me to my next life's adventure, RuneScape. My friend gave me some of the best armor in the game and off we went. I quickly upgraded my first weapon and I grew stronger and stronger. And more powerful than before. And I continued to grow stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until I was weaker than I was before, but I looked really cool doing it. And honestly, life was good until one day. In November of 2012, The Evolution of Combat was released. The game progressively got worse in my opinion and continued receiving updates and options to pay your way through the game. There are plenty of good documentaries about EOC and why it changed RuneScape, so I won't elaborate any more on this. In addition to not enjoying the direction of the gameplay, I was also a noob in the United States Coast Guard. I spent almost all of 2012 to 2014 deployed, which gave me even more reason not to play. In 2013, after many original players quit, Old School RuneScape was released from a version of the game version in 2007. At this point, I was still not very active on RuneScape. In 2014, I moved to Galveston, Texas, where I was stationed at Small Boat Station Galveston. I was talking to my barracks roommate and asked him if he had ever heard of RuneScape since we were the same age. It was like that scene in the movie Step Brothers, to say the least. The one guy you would sleep with. John Samos. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. Do you want to go do karate in the garage? Yep. At this point, life was really good. I had RuneScape back, the RuneScape that I remembered. I was a casual player. At one point though, I did have almost the whole barrackscaping. If you're wondering what coasties do when they aren't tying knots, washing boats, swapping engines, or rescuing idiots on their floaties who drifted out to sea, they're scaping. 2018 was by far the worst year of my life. My grandfather, who was my best friend, passed away. I grew up with my grandparents, and it's where I spent much of my time playing RuneScape. This account, this game, it means much more to me than to most people. This game is a lot of memories. I've also learned many life lessons from this game, from how bread is made, to dealing with scammers, and even trading on the stock market. I've also made tons of real friends. Friends that I talk to years later that I'm closer to than some of my friends in real life. I have this YouTube channel, recording my progress to all 99s that I started over a year ago. On RuneScape 3, I still have a party hat and a Santa hat that I've never gotten rid of. This account is my original account, and it is just as much a part of me as is my DNA. I might not get many views on these videos, but for me, this is my self-recording history, and whenever it's all said and done, I'd like to go back and watch it all. If 2018 couldn't get any worse, it did. I was medically retired from the Coast Guard due to the infusions I have to get because of Crohn's disease. I was also test driving in F4 and working part-time at the Lotus Driving Academy. One week after my grandfather died, my driving coach and sponsor Armando Trentini died. Armando was a retired F2 driver from Italy and even competed with drivers such as Nicky Lauda. Shortly after this, I went on a hiatus from real life. I got a job back in my home state and secluded myself from everyone to the point where all I did was work and go home and play RuneScape. Now, I did eventually finish school and I currently work in the medical field. I also plan on going back to school to further my education even more. On September 13th, 2019, I officially released my first video about my journey on deciding to max. I have three reasons for wanting to max. The first being that the cape is super sexy. The second being that I'm OCD and want all of my skills to be the same. And third, having a max account means any and all future content will be available for me to participate in. It's 
also sad that I've managed to play this long and still haven't maxed. I completed all the quests in the game for the first time a few years ago, and ever since then I've never wanted to be held back from a quest or piece of content because of my lack in a skill level. On my course to maxing, I first began using OS Buddy. I believe I was using it before I even started maxing, but it's been a few years and it's hard to remember. Anyways, Runelight came out and I, like most people, switched to Runelight because it's free and despite the controversy with Jagex, it seemed to be okay to use. And boy was I wrong. I took a break from playing OSRS for about a month or two. My last video upload was over three months ago. I decided to come back when I read about the new fishing boss. I was also interested in the new quest Below Ice Mountain, which has a new reward to obtain a wieldable hammer. When it comes to the events leading up to the ban, Unfortunately, they're kind of boring. I had been training at Pyramid Plunder for the next skill in my rotation, and I had been playing on my iPad and phone while I was at work, and as well as on my computer the very last time I even played before the ban occurred. Just before that, the only thing I had done was mine Baronite for a video I was going to do, crushing 500 Baronite to see if I could obtain the hammer, and all the museum pieces, which I will be releasing after this short documentary, by the way. The following night, I had gotten home from work and just finished dinner, and I was gonna hop on RuneScape before bed, as I haven't been playing as much as usual, but I still would like to make videos and actually max my account, so little by little I've been chipping away at it. And that's when I tried to log in and it said my account was not available or whatever, so I checked the account history and this is what I find. Naturally, I panicked as anyone would do with a 15 plus year old account. Because I thought my account had been hijacked, I wasn't sure what to do, so I checked and I mean obviously my password wasn't changed and my authenticator hadn't received any notifications or my email, so I wasn't really sure what had happened. Something else odd that occurred is the time that they said I had committed this offense, I was actually at work, and I wasn't just at work, I had taken an overtime shift working at my state's capital for some major legislation that had been going on to pass that day, and I actually met the governor a few times, and well, I just, I wasn't playing. As I'm making this, I found a photo I had sent my friend from the Coast Guard who logged on and hadn't been on in a while and I was kind of LOLing because I was playing at work because where I work when you're not doing anything you can work out or play RuneScape and I kind of do a mixture of the two. Now you may be asking yourself why I think this is a big deal if it's only temporary but sadly this goes far beyond that. It's the principle. If my account is falsely banned again, it's permanent. It's forever. 15 years of progress lost. Also this fight isn't just for me, it's for all of us. I turned to Twitter, Instagram, live streams, and I got nowhere. The closest I actually got was when I requested a manual review of my account, to which I was promptly sent a generic copy and pasted email from a moderator. I encourage you to pause and read this response because one day this could be you and well they claim they have evidence but they just won't show it. It amazes me that we are consistently bombarded with bots at the GE and elsewhere yet innocent players are being banned while the bots live on. It's also ironic that every day I play I have to clear my ignore list from reporting bots yet my account was banned and I even made a video about the bots at Pyramid Plunder for crying out loud. Red Plunder, just look at that. I've never, out of all the years I've played, I've never seen this many bots. I've concluded that because the only third party client I use is Runelite, this had to have been the problem. My guess as to which plugin it is is narrowed down to the packs for different themes. I say this because I believe that those were the last ones I installed after watching the Theoatrix video on them. If you have any of these plugins, delete them to be safe. I've been playing on the vanilla client since my account was unbanned, but my plan is to uninstall Runelite and reinstall it and play it with the default settings. Having a custom theme I believe triggered the bot detection. I could be wrong though due to the fact that Jagex won't release any evidence. I encourage you all to do the same because in the end, Jagex is not on your side. Unless you're a famous streamer or YouTuber, which I am not, we're all just out of luck. The company we dedicate our time and money to doesn't care, and regardless of what you think I did or didn't do, nothing will likely change. This video is about awareness, because we spend a lot of time playing, and I don't want this to happen to someone else. I was bothered at work for two days, just distracted, trying to pinpoint 
how this could have happened. I understand that Jagex systems can't be 100% perfect, but for a company with so much money and so many players, they really need to have a better player support system. I only hope that if they do see this video, that they also use it as a tool and a lesson to improve. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll gladly update this video in the future if something changes. Thank you guys and take care.